Hey everyone, welcome back to A History of Horror. We'll be continuing our journey into the 1960s. I'm willing to bet that every goth kid in America is a fan of Edgar Allan Poe. Even if you only know him for The Raven, his influence on horror and science fiction has turned him into an American treasure. His face has been featured on clothing and collectibles, and he's even been parodied on South Park. If you're ever in Richmond, you can visit his childhood home, which has since been turned into a museum. He mostly wrote short stories and poetry, so it's difficult to adapt his work into a feature-length film. Karloff and Lugosi starred in The Raven and the Black Cat in the 1930s, but they're loosely based on the stories, mostly paying homage to Poe rather than going by the source material. In the early 60s, AIP commissioned Roger Corman to do several adaptions of Poe's work, this time using a large budget, an A-list cast, and enough time to really focus on the quality. His first adaption was House of Usher, but he carried on with several others, namely Pit in the Pendulum, The Raven, and Mask of the Red Death, which is the one I'm going to talk about today. I picked that one because it's one of my favorites, and I think it's relevant considering the COVID-19 pandemic taking place right now. The story is about a cruel prince named Prospero finding out about the Red Death sweeping the village outside of the castle. In the midst of the fear, he invites his aristocrat friends to find sanctuary in the castle and throw an elaborate party. The theme hit close to home for many contemporary Americans, the idea that wealth and power is the best protection against harsh realities. While the common people suffer, the ruling class throw a masquerade, oblivious to the death and destruction outside of their walls. Prospero also takes on a young village girl named Francesca, whom he desires, but their clash in ideologies create a wedge between them. It also doesn't help that both her father and husband have been imprisoned in the dungeon. Vincent Price takes the lead in one of his most sinister roles. There really isn't a redeemable quality about him, and it seems that he grows more wicked with each scene. I would even argue that he embodied the political turbulence that was going on at the time the film was made. As we move into the 1960s, the United States became involved in the biggest conflict since World War II. The military escalation in Vietnam was coupled with the new rise in mass media. Whereas before, this type of coverage could only be found in the newspapers and on the radio, now it appeared in everyone's living room, in shocking color. The violence and evil of the world could no longer go ignored. Can you look around this world and believe in the goodness of a god who rules it? Famine, pestilence, war, disease, and death, they rule this world. There is also love and life and hope. Very little hope, I assure you. It's an atmospheric kind of horror, with great sets and costumes. Their use of color is fantastic, and it's one of my favorite aspects of the movie. There's even an acid trip sequence, because hey, it was the 60s. Well everyone, thank you for watching. If you found this episode to be kind of a downer, please remember that horror movies are a reflection of the time. They are mankind's attempt to face the insecurities by looking death right in the face. If you're disturbed by any of this, then strap in, because the 60s and 70s are going to be a hell of a ride. Thanks again for watching, I'll see you next time.